Do you know that ambiosis affects 50 million people every year and kills annually 100,000 people? Hi, my name is Vita Kende, and today I have the honor of presenting to you research that I've been able to discover on ambiosis. Today, in my presentation, I'll be covering the background, I'll be touching on some history, outbreaks, the main cause of ambiosis, symptoms, diagnostic techniques, the experiment that I researched, vaccination and future research, treatment, prevention, by conclusion, bibliography, and then I'll open the floor for any questions or comments you may have. Background. Amniasis is mostly prevalent in developing countries. Countries that can be found, yeah, countries that can be found in Africa, South America, and Central America. Amniasis is also known as the second most deadly parasitic disease worldwide. It has a very low prevalence in the United States, because from 1990 to 2007, only 134 deaths connected to ambiosis have occurred. Ambiosis is called by the by Pistilica, and humans mostly become infected with ambiosis by ingesting the cyst-like form that Entamoeba takes on. History. Ambiosis was initially discovered by Hippocrates in 87 BC but it wasn't until the 19th century that it became more of a recognized disease. Federer Lasch, in 1875, discovered the parasite E. silica and was still a patient. In 1912, Leonard Rogers discovered a treatment for MBI, which was Emmentine. Emmentine is no longer used as a treatment due to the fact that the side effects of the medication were actually worse than the symptoms of ambiosis. In 1913, scientists Walker and, Walker and Seller discovered the cyst-like form. This was also found in the stool of a patient. And the full life cycle of eosilica was described in 1925 by Nobel. The most dramatic outbreak that ever occurred in the United States was Chicago's World's Fair outbreak. This occurred in 1933. As I said before, it was the biggest outbreak in America. There were 1,000 cases and 58 fatalities from this outbreak. As of late, food processors have been accused of causing infections of ambiosis all over the world. But since there have been no really widespread epidemics, food authorities can't really accuse them of anything or any involvement in the infections. Transmission. There are two ways that ambiosis can be spread, but the most common way is spread through food and water. This is when food and wa the food or the water is contaminated fecally, and the feces has the E. silica cyst inside of it. Also, you can get this by being in direct contact with feces. The main cause of ambiosis and to me silica. Uh, is the origin of ambiosis, and entity basilica is a unicellular prokaryotic organism. It also belongs to the kingdom Brigista, so it's a parasite. The cyst like form survives in fecal matter and soil for up to two months and can gain access to the body when food and drink are contaminated with feces. Um, the first step in invasion is embedding itself in the host's digestive tracts, but usually before this, it's been in the water or drink or food of the host. After it embeds itself in the digestive tract, it begins to produce trypozoites. Trypozoites are when the parasite comes out of its latent stage and begins to get into its active feeding stage. After this, it makes its way to the large intestine and tunnels into the intestinal wall. And after it it tunnels into the intestinal wall, is able to enter the bloodstream and wreak havoc on other organs and cause lesions on organs, you know, the liver and the kidney symptoms. 90% of patients that have ambiosis are asymptomatic. Asymptomatic means that they have they show little little or no symptoms. For the 10% that do have symptoms, however, the symptoms can range from mild to severe. Mild symptoms include three to eight semiform stools a day, abdominal cramps, and excess gas. Severe symptoms can include 10 to 20 stools per day, 
abdominal tenderness, and blood in the stool. The incubation period for this disease ranges from about a week to four weeks. Diagnostic techniques. The most commonly used diagnostic technique for MDISIS is the stool antigen detection test. This is just when stool samples are taken to be tested for various infections or diseases. The only problem with this method is that the stool sample either has to be fresh or frozen for the test to be done on it. So if it's left out for a long period of time, or not even that long, it can actually be nature and it would be completely useless to whoever is trying to detect the E. silica parasite. Um, the, the best technique, according to a lot of doctors, is PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. And they think it's the best because it's the most accurate in diagnosing. The only problem with this is that in countries that actually need to diagnose this disease more often, they usually cannot afford the, uh, I'm sorry, they cannot afford the labs and all the other stuff that's needed to uh, do the PCR test. Other diagnostic techniques are microscopy and culture analysis. So going to my experiment. First my experiment the background. So the experiment was done to test to see whether or not melatonin reduces the severity of experimental MBISIS and it tested the effects of melatonin on the body of a hamster. It was observed by the amount of dead tissue or necrosis that can be found inside of the hamster's body. But before we get into what, um, into my procedure, I will talk about what melatonin is. Melatonin is a hormone found in animals and plants, it's also known as a dietary supplement, and it causes stimulation of the immune response. Uh, it has by simulation of the immune response, I mean that melatonin has immunohancing effects and induces the production of inflammatory cytokines. And inflammatory cytokines are what interact with the cells of the immune system in order to regulate the body's response to disease and effect. So basically, it gets the immune response working quicker and faster. So the procedure was there were two groups of hamsters, and both were inoculated with the HM1 strain of the silica. One group was treated with melatonin, and the other was not. And the group that was not treated with melatonin was considered to be the control group. And the results were that melatonin-treated hamsters had less tissue destruction, and there were also varying areas of necrosis in the hamsters. So in the hamsters that were not treated, there tended to be Bit, large amounts of necrosis or dead tissue in the hamsters over uh, like small distances in the body, if that makes sense. And in the ones that were treated, there were small amounts of necrosis interspersed between like tissue layers. And from this, we conclude that melatonin may be useful in enhancing the body's immune system and also in decreasing necrosis. And for future research, we hope that we're, scientists are, are hoping that we'll be able to incorporate melatonin into treatments that may stop uh, E. silica from damaging further any of the body's organs. All right, vaccination and future research. Currently, there are no vaccinations for MBISIS, and sadly, the parasite has found mechanisms to further disrupt the immune system and the host body systems. The host also has mechanisms to stop the parasite, but a vaccine would really put an end to all of it. And recently, scientists have found that mucus, that something in mucus is linked to the immunity against the East Silica parasite invasion. So they're looking further into that to hopefully come up with a vaccination. Treatment. So for asymptomatic patients, which is 90% of patients that do have ambiasis, the treatment is the loxanide This is taken on a 10-day course, so for 10 days. And for the 10% that do have patients that do have symptoms, metronidazole and tinidazole is taken also on a 10-day course. And these medications basically just get rid of the parasite and flush out your system. 
But if there's like more damage done to your system or a parasite, you have to take other treatments and possibly have to go into surgery if the damage done was bad enough. Preventions. The best way to prevent this disease is just to have proper sanitation. Wash your hands after using the bathroom. Wash your fruits and vegetables. Uh, drink a lot of water and soft drinks because sometimes, especially in other countries, uh, water from the river, water from lakes, water from like well water might not be all that safe or clean. It might be infected with these or the cysts. And for my conclusion, MBIasis is known as the second most deadly parasitic disease. It kills 100,000 people annually. The main parasite is E. stilica. This disease tends to be asymptomatic in 90% of patients that have MBIasis, and they are currently in the vaccinations, although they are really working at trying to find better treatments and better, or, or just a vaccine to stop the disease from happening. So my bibliography. And now I'll be looking for any questions or comments. Yeah, you can. What is a cyst? A cyst is a small capsule sac that encloses certain organisms in their dormant or larval stage. There. Your diagnosis, since you mentioned culture analysis, culture analysis. That is. No, I'll get back to you on that one. Tucson? You said it's the uh, second most deadly parasitic disease. What's yes. the first most deadly? I'm not sure about that. Maybe I'll get back to you on that. Carly? Um, you said that in Hopkins, there's a tracker for a solid disease scale. How do you describe it? No, I don't know how he described it. But I do know that he didn't go further into his research of that because he thought that it was another form of dysentery. Dysentery. 